I consider this one to be one of those uh, very underrated slasher films that I do think need to be seen by a lot more people, and definitely people that are fans of like heavy metal and hard rock and stuff like that. This has actually got a great original soundtrack to it by a band that calls themselves Sorcery, and it's part of a genre of horror where there aren't a whole lot of entries in this whole subgenre of heavy metal meets horror meets slasher films, which to me, it's 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 like peanut butter and jelly. It's like peanut butter and chocolate. It's, it's just fucking perfect. I think this is a perfect blending of, of two different things, of metal and of horror. Of course, you have other, other movies like Trick or Treat, Black Roses, Rock and Roll Nightmare. Uh, in my opinion, no, this one is the purest and the, the best of this subgenre because for me, well, at least for me anyways, like my favorite form of horror film is the slasher and my favorite kind of music tends to be heavy metal and the music in this movie tends to is actually fucking awesome. And I don't know about you guys, but I love the music in this movie. This is what keeps me coming back for rewatches and I also give the soundtrack quite a few re-listens. I love the, the dude's voice. It actually reminds me a little bit of Danzig. It's got a little bit of that kind of tone to it. And there was recently a... Blu-ray slash DVD release of this film. They were they're they're promising an HD remaster, and they basically what what had happened was everybody got fucking screwed uh, because it was basically just a, a DVD R of the VHS transfer. They were promised uh, T-shirts, posters, all this different memorabilia. Most people didn't even get their package, and the people that did just ended up getting fucking duped. Ended up getting, as I said, the DVD-R with, like, basically a VHS transfer. It's actually a lot like what happened when uh, Jim Van Beber tried to get a release for Deadbeat at Dawn from Synapse, and they did the same thing. They basically put on this real shitty interlaced VHS rip of Deadbeat at Dawn and, and put it out and attempted to call it a Blu-ray slash DVD, but at least what came out of that was a number of threatening voicemails that Jim had left on the on the answering machine of the owner of Synapse. Uh, actually, I would recommend YouTubing that shit. It's fucking funny. Would you like to try it again? It stinks. <laughs> and I gotta give credit where it's due, where credit is due. I discovered this uh, this movie thanks to Good Bad Flicks, uh, Cecil Trachenberg. So. And what I, what I thought was kind of wild is when I'd watched the review and I'd seen what the movie was about, the fact that it was like a heavy metal revenge from the grave slasher, what tripped me out a bit is I think in like grade 11, I had this idea for a screenplay to, to do basically the same thing, like uh, a sadistic heavy metal singer who tries to kill his own band, they kill him, but then he comes back as like, like a killer zombie. So it's like, shit, either, either that makes me a genius or this movie is sophomoric as fuck. I think it's a little bit of both. Now, does she get completely naked? Oh, God damn it! I'm on tit watch again. I'm on tit and possibly bush watch. Oh, we got side boob, side boob, and nudity. <laughs> Yo, horror mom, defense! Okay, I think the nudity may be over for now. Oh, wow, we just missed it. She's in the tub now. You can't see your tits because they're covered by the bubbles. She's a dirty girl, Fluffy, but she likes to be clean. Almighty Faust, these boots are made for stabbing, and that's just what they'll do. One of these boot one of these days these boots are gonna stab all over you. We might be getting a lot of Oh shit! <laughs> oh my god! I think I picked the wrong movie, folks. Or the right one. And now all of a sudden. Billy is evil. Was he always evil, or is it the drugs? So you'd, you'd like to think that what he's smoking is like crystal meth or crack or, or something like that, but considering this is the 80s and how much they were, a, a lot of uh, conservatives were, were cracking down on, on drugs, it's probably just hash or pot, and they're like, they're like, weed will make you nuts, man. Oh my god, Rachel, he does have kind of a, kind of a Lou Reed vibe to him. Definitely the hair. Shut up. Come on, Billy. I just censored for, for like the last fucking ten minutes straight. You need a little help. 
Oh shit, tit watch. Rapey! Rapey tit watch. I want to get drunk, I want to get laid in that order. You got it? Okay, got it. you with me? Yeah. You with me now? Get drunk, get laid. The 1980s mantra of epic. Hi, I'm Rick Righteous, and I'm a fucking asshole. Ah, the cocaine. That's actually a great little moment there. <laughs> Offers the dude coke, but they're still live. Want a little toot? Want some blow? Hello, Rainbow Eyes. Booga, booga, booga. <laughs> Look out for man bear pig. I do love this whole element of Billy playing his music backwards and using it as like as a mind fuck on the chick. I actually really do dig that. So you play a Zepp you play a Zeppelin record backwards, you get satanic messages. You get some controversial shit. You play Billy backwards, you get so basically just backwards. 80s aerobics! Look at those tits go. Can this movie get any more 80s? Like seriously. Two chicks in flash dance clothes going ape shit working out to a fucking guitar solo in a wood panel house. This movie knows what I like. Flexible chicks. Hi, Rachel. What's up? Nobody. I wonder if she could do that all day. If that phone wasn't there, I think that chick's leg would just be going up and down until the sun goes down. Hey, Billy just wants to earn his red wings. And these two women are on a mission to ruin a happy gay couple and create an Angela. Onion time today, too. Just realized something. Lake Lakes are like the quarries of slasher film. Like the quarry with Toku. So many slashes have lakes, even if they don't make sense in context of the film. Great. It's kind of true. In, in a lot of slasher films, you get a lake house and a lake. It, it'll show up at some point. For whatever reason. Oh, shit. <laughs> we just got some full-ass fucking frontal nudity there because I was reading the chat. <laughs> God damn you, Rocktober Blood. God damn you. Oh, shit. This girl keeps getting naked, man. Which normally wouldn't bother me, but this is Twitch. Don't get up. Don't get up, you stupid bitch. Oh, my God. <laughs> Son of a bitch. She is covered in head to toe now. Towel on her head and everything. A shirt. Full long sleeve shirt. Thank you, ma'am. Now stay that way for a while. Hello, Rainbow Eyes. I've decided I'm a juggalo now. <laughs> it's got a nice crazy laugh. <laughs> I'm I'm the evil guy. But the only one who's seen him is you, okay? <laughs> This guy is basically giving the minimum give a shit performance required. <laughs> I know those boots. It's Brian Thompson from Cobra. Now here is what would benefit this movie from having a Blu-ray release is the night shots are very muddy and very washed out. I imagine we'd be able to see a lot more, which is what happened with the Blu-ray release of Humongous. Because the VHS copy of that fucking movie is unwatchable. Anytime it's nighttime, you can't see shit. Spooky, scary skeleton. God, people from the 80s are really easy to fool. You, you take any plastic replica skeleton from a science classroom and stick it in a coffin and wrap a bandana around its head and... Oh, that, that that's totally Billy. Okay, I believe he's dead. Stupid bitch. We are watching the dark, Rachel. So much dark. This, unfortunately, pretty much is the only copy of the film. It's me, Billy! It was me all along! This is some genuinely awesome shit, though, in that you've got the killer in the movie, in disguise, actually murdering people during a show, 
which at this time would just be seen as like a stage act. Like this would just be some Alice Cooper wasp shit. There can be only one. Throws her fucking head in the crowd. Metal. I do fucking love this song though. He's being electrocuted to death, but he's still gonna get that whale out. So, so what are we supposed to take from that? He's not dead? And Billy went on to do a major mass murdering heavy metal America wide tour. He made millions. Four gold records. The most successful <laughs> most successful performer of his time. Billy is a living legend of the mass murdering heavy metal industry. Time Life presents Zombie Rock. actually a lot like what happened when uh, Jim Van Beber tried to get a release for Deadbeat at Dawn from Synapse. At least what came out of that was a number of threatening voicemails. Hey Don May, this is Jim Van Beber, and I'm trying to be as calm as I can, but I just watched the disc that you sent me, and that is the worst piece of shit that I've ever seen in my fucking life! God damn! I mean, none of it. I mean, maybe 25% of it is color corrected. The rest of it looks like shit. The rest of it, I mean, goddamn, the kitchen video looks better. I'm sorry, the tape looks fucking better. It looks like a pile of shit. You should be ashamed of yourself. So, I'm so fucking pissed I don't know what to do. Hey, May. I'm so fucking disgusted with my fucking transfer in my movie. Oh boy, if I had money, I would sue you like a motherfucker. Because it's uncomprehensible what you've done to my piece of work. My film don't look nothing like that pile of crap that you sent me. You motherfucker, I'm so pissed at you. Oh, God damn. God damn, you don't understand how bad you've hurt me. You really have hurt me, dude. You've like, you've killed me, man. You've, you've wounded 